Welcome to the Cross Border Interview Signature Series, and particularly welcome to the realm where fear will be taking center stage, and the lines between reality and nightmare blurs. On today's special Halloween episode, we are going to be delving deep into the sinister universe of the horror movie genre, where every creaking floorboard and every whisper in the dark is a precursor to the unknown. Within the next hour, join me and our resident horror expert, David Mercer, as we go into the walls where the screams of terror are as familiar as beatings of one's own heart. We embark on a hair-raising journey exploring the enigmatic depths of fear that have enthralled audiences for generations. From the tales that have kept us awake at night to the phantoms that continue to haunt our collective psyche, this episode promises an unparalleled immersion into the blood-curdling narratives that have carved their place in the history of cinematic horror. David and I will unravel the secrets behind the masterpiece that dared to blur the boundaries between the real and the supernatural, unearthing our top five horror films of the 1990s. So join us as we pay homage to the titans of the horror industry of the 1990s and the movies that sculpted nightmares into art and the tales that continue to beckon us into the realm of the unknown. This is CBI Signature Series. David, welcome. How are you? I am wonderful. It's great to be here again. I I, I always look forward to this. I was I was trying to think, is this our third year doing this? This is, I think this is our third year. Wow, what, how time has flown by, eh? <laughs> crazy, crazy. Three years, and I couldn't have asked for a better person to do this conversation with. As I said, we are going to be diving into the top five movies in our opinion. And I say that because David has his own opinions, all but be wrong. And I have the correct opinions, all be right opinions. So we're going to be talking about the top five horror films of 1990s. So that's January 1st, 1990 to December 31st, 1999, everywhere in between what we believe is the top five horror films in our opinions are that you could be watching tonight on Halloween, all Hallows Eve, and be watching them with your family as trick-or-treaters go door to door. And hopefully remember, be safe kids. But I want to start with a big question. Because I think this is a, a, always a fun thing that we have to ask. What are you dressing up this year as there, David, for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this year is, is actually uh, my, my daughter, as you know, is, is in college. So so I no longer get to go trick or treating and I no longer get to dress up. So so I am going to be me, a horror author for Halloween. <laughs> That is the most scariest thing, especially when it comes to paying bills. You're like, whoa! <laughs> now, don't tell me that you're going to wear the same costume, right? You, you as David Musser. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm thinking. So let's jump into our top five movies. So I'm going to let you take the lead on the, the fifth movie, if you want. So in your opinion because I want to jump right into this as quickly as possible, because I think we're going to have some spirited debates as we always do around horror films. In your opinion, what do you see as one of the top five movies of the 1990s? The 1990s was a great year. I mean, just start off with that. I mean, there's a ton of movies in the 90s that I just, I was like, wow, that was in the 90s? Amazing. Uh, the, we've already got a controversy on the first one. So, mm. so if this one's not allowed to be called a movie, then I have another alternate number five. Okay. It, it from Stephen King. Okay. Is that, so, so we're talking we about the that? television movie that was uh, Phil, uh, that was released on ABC, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I think, I think you go for it because a made for television oh. movie is still a movie. <laughs> exactly. It's just a longer movie, right? Because it was a mini series. Uh, that that movie was just amazing. It's it's one that you know I didn't rate it higher because it doesn't hold up as much on the special effects, but the creepiness factor still holds up. And you can't you can't beat Tim Curry as as the clown. You just you just can't. I mean, anytime I walk past a sewer drain, 
I'm looking down there to make sure I don't see him looking up at me, right? It's yeah, you know, I'm out there mowing today and taking taking blowing some leaves away. And I'm like just stepping back, going, just making sure Tim Curry's not under there saying we all float down here. Uh so so that is is my number five. Uh I'm trying to bring it today. So I, I want people to say, hey, Dave Mustard list was better. So oh so, I, so. I, I I'm coming for you, man, because I, I think there's I think we're gonna be having some very heated uh, talks talks about mine. But I want to talk about that for a second because it started a conversation around clowns being a true nightmare. And I That's think true. Even with the remake that they did later, uh, a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it still didn't hold up against Tim Curry. And I, I, I God bless Tim Curry because he's a fantastic arc, uh, actor. But it's a, it's a bad thing that what he's going through right now with all the strokes that he's had. But he encompassed that movie. Everyone else in that movie was great, but Tim Curry yeah. took it to the next step. Exactly. Yeah, there, there's there's no better is that one. I mean, it's just it it just he was the perfect person for that role. There, there's you know it, it's one where a lot of my favorite movies are Tim Curry movies, uh, just in general, right? It's you know, Clue just cracks me up every time I see it, and 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 it's just just one of those movies. But but it just just the you know the little balloon floating through the library. Right. And, and, and at the restaurant and all of those little scenes are just iconic scenes. And, and the way they were able to do that back then with having everybody be young and then all of a sudden, you know, later on, everybody's older. Right. I don't know that that had ever been done in a movie before. Now, maybe somebody had done it in a book or something like that. But the fact that they fought that evil when they were kids and then had to return, you know, I'm. I'm fairly certain that was unique to what Stephen King did, right? I, I don't know of anything that did like that before. Now, I, I'm going to challenge you a little bit here because I, I think I need to. Are you an originalist when it comes to movies, uh, books being turned into movies? Because uh, you you read it, the original Stephen King book, which is quite long, quite long, <laughs> and then you watch <laughs> this adaptation of it, the original adaptation of it with uh, John Ritter and Tim Curry, and there's things that are missing. And that's where I didn't put this on my list. I will be a blunt about it. I didn't put it on my list because I am a true uh, uh, originalist when it comes to movies being adapted, uh, uh, being adapted to from a book. Were you concerned about that? Or it doesn't seem like it because it's on your top five. I, I saw it first before I read the book. So, so I okay. think that that was the thing for me. So I was introduced to it from the movies in the same way with, with Salem's Lot, right. From Stephen King, right. I was introduced to it through the movies first and, you know, being scared, scared to go to sleep, you know, making sure I don't see any evil clowns, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So, I, so I don't think I'm a religion, an originalist. There we go. English Dave. Um, so, but I don't think I'm an originalist, but when I have read books that they have turned into movies later, I'm someone who wants to make sure that the characters are true to what they were in the book. Right. I don't I'm not a big fan of them changing characters or changing plot lines just because it fits within the two hour movie or the hour and 30 minute movie, whatever it is. Right. I, I want it to be original to the intent that the author had. So I will go that far. But as far as this one, no, I, I watched the movie first way before I started reading. So I just want to see an adaptation of it where the actual turtle shows up. That's all I'm asking for. That's that, literally all you, I'm asking for. <laughs> You're exactly right. And that that was from H.P. Lovecraft. Right. Uh, so so because I think that King was a huge fan of Lovecraft, which I've been studying Lovecraft a bunch. In fact, my, my book we'll talk about later. I, I patterned that off of some of Lovecraft stuff. And it was just amazing when I started researching him, how much King pays homage to him to it. Right. And just, you know, wonderful. And then like right now, I've, I've got it on my screen, the trailer for for it. And seeing the little boy, you know, walk, follow the boat down the, the stream, even now I'm sitting there going, no, don't, don't go there. Just stop. <laughs> you don't need the boat. <laughs> Your brother will make you another one. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so no, it's, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I'm not an originalist, an originalist when it comes to that. So for my, my fifth, and this was really hard for me because 
the top three I kind of knew from the 1990s. The fourth one, I was like, okay, this kind of fits in there. But the fifth one is where I was kind of having a hard time trying to nail it down. And even until this moment when we're recording this, because I have the list of potential fifths off to the side, and I'm thinking, okay, which one is truly my fifth? And I have to say, and this is probably going to show you a little bit where I come from when it comes to horror. I'm going to say my uh, fifth favorite horror film of the 1990s was Dracula. The 1992 version with Gary Oldman and Anthony Hopkins, Winona Ryder, Keanu Reeves. And the reason I say that is because it stuck true. And again, I'm an originalist. It stuck true to the original, the original, uh, yes. the play from Bram. And I forget his last name right now. And it's literally off the top of my head. I can't remember it. But Anthony Hopkins was great. Gary Oldman as Dracula was fantastic not a big fan of Winona Ryder but she did a fantastic job in this and from what we hear now Gary uh Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder were married on set here so they were actually <laughs> married so that's even scarier to me if you ask me but for me uh has to be Dracula because I'm a big Gary Oldman fan and whenever he portrays an evil character he brings it and he brought it as this when he was Old Dracula to young Dracula, you could tell that there was things that kids were having nightmares about in 1992 and 1993 if they went to go see this movie with their family, which hopefully they did not. But knowing my family, they would have brought me. <laughs> Gary Oldman was amazing in it. My, yes. My only, and, and Gary Oldman's just amazing in general. I mean, I, I can't think of a movie he's been in that, that his part in it, I didn't didn't like. Right. And, and of course, you know, Keanu Reeves can't do anything wrong. Right. As far, as far as that goes, he's he's just everybody loves him and all that. Well, yeah, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but I won't but, talk about the lake house there, man. OK, so let's not go. Let's not go. There's nothing he hasn't been in. That's good. <laughs> I, I actually forgot about that movie. I think I blacked it out. I think it was one of those things where I'm like going, no, no, I don't want to remember that movie. OK, so so just so you know, I did. uh I did plan to hijack you today, as far as that goes, uh, in a literal sense. I pulled up the top 100 Rotten Tomatoes numbers. Of course you would. Of course you so, would. So, so it ranks at number 32 on okay. the top, top 100. Dracula, number 15. So, so, so you. I'm already done with the David already. Let's just end uh, it right people, here. The people in the have spoken, <laughs> uh, but no, I, 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 I did love that movie. It, uh, it's, it's not on my list, but it's not on my list on purpose. Why is that? I didn't like. I didn't like the 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 makeup and things like that in that as much. Right. I thought it was a little bit overdone for me. I mean, I, I'm sure it was perfect and things like that. But just Gary Oldman's makeup in some of the Dracula scenes, I wasn't as crazy about. Um, and I'm tending to remember, now maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but I tend to remember he was out on a foggy day mm -hmm. in, in London once. And, and that's not something I like for my vampires to be out during the day. Now, I think it was also in the book, but I can't remember back enough i'm just you know it's one of those things i'm mixing my my vampire lure there right is is it the sun or is it that they what do you mean just... they weren't he wasn't sparkling oh yeah yeah was, i like my vampire shiny that's why it didn't make the list okay uh no i think i think i would just lose all of my horror credentials if if i like shiny vampires <laughs> Anthony Hopkins can in so you say Keanu Reeves can do no wrong. In my opinion, Anthony Hopkins could do no wrong, and you're probably going to see a, a pattern here when we talk later on. But I, I I truly believe Anthony Hopkins as Van Helsing as the narrator, he has that feel about him, right? Because oh, yeah. Anthony Hopkins embodies who he plays, no matter if he's playing uh, uh like a funny person or a dad with dementia, he embodies the person who he's playing. And when you listen, when you listen to him as the narrator throughout the entire movie, him as Van Helsing, him as the priest, you literally get an idea that this is actually him. This is not Anthony Hopkins playing a character. This is Van Helsing. This is the priest. This is the narrator. And even when you look at it now, because I know it's 1992, when you look back on it, you go, holy crap. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Makeup has come a long way since 1992. So if they did it again, it might be different. Well, I didn't but like it then. 
but I understand. <laughs> no, and I, I do too. So when I look at this, I go, okay. And that's why it was back and forth with this one, because there was two that I was going to put in here. And I was just like, okay, which one do I really like more? And then I was like, okay, this one just ekes it out a little bit. And in our honorable mentions, which we'll be talking about a little bit later, this is where I want kind of went. Okay, I think I have to because old uh, Gary Oldman and Anthony Hopkins together, I think this is the only move they've done, actually sells it for me. So there's... Yeah, there's... And, and Anthony Hopkins, I mean, he's one of the best actors of our time. I mean, simple as that. I mean, when I think about him, I think of, you know, like Vincent Price. You, sir, was... have never seen Pauly Shore in action then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do have one that has a... Uh, do you remember the guy from Night of the Roxbury? Uh, Chris Catan uh, or Will Ferrell? The not the Will Ferrell, the other guy. Chris Catan, he's, he's yeah. And that, and just a spoiler, that horror movie is on my list. So okay, so number four. So we've gone okay, through so some number. Went, so went, just to wrap number five. So number five for you was was it was it. number five. And so the number the nineteen nineties version of it for those who are listening, I just want to make sure people remember that what we're talking yes, about. Yes, the Bill Skarsgård one sucked, <laughs> <laughs> and and for you is Dracula, which ranks for them number fifteen. Yes, uh, either one of those is a great watch. I mean, it that's, is. That's the. I, I think our list tonight will be a great watch for anybody, especially you know, watch with your teenagers, introduce them to some good horror movies, right? Because they're there's some today. on my list that I don't even think most people know about. So I think it's, and they're Ooh, mostly on streaming. Yeah. So now we're going off to number four. So I'm I'm going to, I'm going to start this one because you started number five, if that's okay. That's and this cool. one barely makes the cut. This one barely makes the cut because it was released on November 19th, 1999. So it was wow. literally a month and about 10 days away from not being uh, on this list. And I like it because of two reasons. I was always a fan of the area and I always loved learning about the headless horseman. And my nice. fourth favorite movie is sleepy hollow. Johnny Depp. Uh, I, 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 it's not, I, for some reason, I want to say it's Winona Ryder, but it's not Winona Ryder because that's all I can think about right now. Christina Ritchie are you. in Sleepy Hollow. And for those who really, really want to play this, I think even Christopher Walken is in it because he plays the Headless Horseman, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think it's an overall great film. I think Johnny Depp is it's probably one of the better films that Johnny Depp has done. I think it is scary. I think the part where you're looking at the tree and the blood starts spilling from the tree is very scary. I think uh, the headless horseman is just scary to me because a horse, I, I just don't like horses to begin with, but then you have someone who's headless on the said horse. It makes it 10 times scary for me. And then the art sets are great. The, the sets are great. The costumes are great. Uh, Johnny Depp's humor comes across in it a little bit, but it still cusps that line of horror, but not too horror, where it's like gut and spill and all that. So I think for my number four, it has to be Sleepy Hollow uh, from 1999. Johnny Depp so, has, has been in a bunch of, or several horror movies. I can't say a bunch of but several horror movies that, that are really good. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, I, I liked it, but I can no longer recommend Johnny Depp for a horror movie after he killed Dark Shadows. He simply killed that movie. And I'm sorry, Mr. Depp, uh, but but yeah, you need to remake it, pay for somebody to remake it, but you killed Out my of favorite. everything that Johnny Depp has done in his life, the only that thing that personal... matters is Dark Man. <laughs> It was a perf. It was it was it was a direct attack on my soul when he did Dark Shadows. Uh, it just it just was. I mean, Dark Shadows was a classic. So 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 that's why Johnny Depp will never make any of my lists. <laughs> but uh, great actor. Movie was great. I mean, I, I can't complain about the movie. Uh, once again, you're going to beat me on the numbers. Uh, it's 25 is what that tops in at the top 100. I thought it'd be interesting to see that today. So, so 25, yes, you you went down, uh, 70 percent score as far as that goes. Uh, oh wow! But the the thing that I liked the best about that movie was Christina Ricci. No, uh, the thing I liked best about that movie was the uh, 
was was how the the costumes were so accurate yeah. for the time, right? And, and and people have to remember special effects and CGI weren't that that prevalent back then. There were some. Uh, it doesn't the CGI in a lot of movies don't doesn't hold up now to, to today's, but just their outfits were so on point in that show, and and you cared about the character. You always had cared about the character because it's something that we were always told those stories from when we were a kid. So he did not ruin that character. <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> Yet. Okay. He's going to be Sleepy Hollow too. No. Okay. <laughs> For you, what is your top, what is your number four horror film of ni- the 1990s? So, so my, 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 my number two, Four or yeah, number four, four. Is, is actually a remake of a Vincent Price movie, and I thought they did a good job of it. It's House on Haunted Hill. So House on Haunted Hill with Vincent Price start was in 1959. If you want to watch something funny, watch the trailer where it's got the skeleton walking and the woman's backing up towards a pit of acid that was in this thing. I don't, I don't know who would have a pit of acid in their house. But evidently, back in those days, you know, back in the in the in the fifties, people did. So, uh, so, so yeah. So, so House on on Haunted Hill, uh, basically, just for anyone who doesn't know, a group of people are offered a million dollars to stay in this haunted house. Is this the, the house, Matthew Lillard one? This is the Insane Asylum. It's uh, William Malone directed it, and it's got in it. It's got the. Uh, it's got. Uh, uh, Joffrey Rush, uh, it's got Ty Diggs in it. It's not the one with uh, what? Which one? I'm thinking Thirteen Ghosts. Never mind. You thought you're thinking Thirteen Ghosts, which was later, which is a great movie, by the way, for anyone who's not seen that. It uh, certainly I, is. Oh, yeah, so no, this is the one with Chris Kattan in it. Yes, yes, and and it's it's a really it's a really good scary movie. It's one of those ones where it's got the ghosts and things like that in this in the insane asylum. Uh, the one of the main characters in it was actually in the reanimator if you remember that classic movie uh he was the main character from that so he plays the doctor in this one but yeah chris Kattan is in this and one of the things i was uh researching for this because i don't just show up for your show i research uh was the 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 this movie <laughs> unlike your other guests no i'm just kidding uh <laughs> but no the uh uh Ty Diggs had just came out in in like The Bachelor or something like that or Bachelor at whatever whatever the, the movie was his super popular movie uh you know made bazillions of dollars and number one forever well two weeks later this movie comes out and so it didn't do as well it doubled what it cost to make which which is is supposed to be profitable right uh but but they said that you know it's one of the ones where people either loved it or they disliked it and but people were actually revisiting it as one of those classic horror movies. Uh, the CGI, eh, it's 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 one where where most of it holds up pretty well. Uh, the the actual live action stuff that they're doing is what's still amazing, right? There's scenes where they're using real things instead of instead of you know the CGI, like somebody gets thrown in a pool full of blood. You know, of course it's not blood, but you know, thrown in a pool full of blood and it looks real and then all that good sort of stuff. And you're just sitting there going, wow. And uh, but yeah, no, it's it's a really good movie. Uh the uh Famke Jansen, I, I guess I just ruined her name. She went on after this movie to play like Phoenix in the X-Men. So oh, it was something okay. where a lot of people Great. became really popular after this as well. So yeah, so this this is this is my number four. Uh you beat me. It's it's number 79 on their on their top. Uh, but but you know. It, it's still got a very good rating and all that good stuff, fun stuff. But, but that, I'm, that's I'm not beating you. I'm just saying that I'm a better horror uh, expert when it comes to horror genre films than you. Exactly. I just hope whenever they make make a uh, one of my books into a movie that, that you give me a good rating. Anyway. There you uh, go. I'll, I'll, I'll make it an honorable mention at least. Okay. I knew <laughs> David before when. Um, exactly. So just want to make to recap then so for number four for me is sleepy hollow and for number four for you it is house on haunted hill house on haunted hill 
Let's go to number three. Ooh, now we're now we're getting into the part of the show where I'm like, okay, this is when I I, I pull out the big cards. This is when no matter what, I'm gonna pull out the big cards and people will be like, Chris knows his things. So for you, number three, what is your number three pick for favorite movie horror film of the 1990s? It's in the mouth of madness. I have not it's, heard of this show, this movie. Okay, so so it's by John Carpenter. And let me just say, Mr. Carpenter, if you want to direct any of my books, you can have the rights to it for the movies. Okay, just the movies. I want the book rights, just to say. Mr. John Carpenter is amazing, right? What was it, The Thing? You know, I, there's just great art, great director. Uh, so basically an insurance an insurance investigator is trying to find a writer in his last manuscript that he finished and everyone who reads this manuscript goes insane, which is always a good thing. Uh, and it's it, it's 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 very it, it's it's very creepy. It's it's based, you know. I would it, there's a lot of Cthulhu type stuff in it. Is 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 how the monsters look, which you know they're they're you know H.P. Lovecraft was was one that was a uh, inspiration to a lot of people, right? In general, uh, the main actor in it is Sam Neill, who you may remember from Jurassic Park. It He's also has Dr. Grant. Funny enough, Charlton Heston is in the movie as well. So yes, he's he's not in black and white in the movie either. He's in color. <laughs> he plays he plays a uh, uh, like the uh, uh, book publisher, right? So who hires him to go out and find find this missing author and and all of that good stuff. And it's one where just as Sam Neill gets further and further involved into it. Uh, it's it's one of those where you know he's basically sucked into the madness. It it starts off at the very beginning of the movie with him in an insane asylum wearing a straitjacket. So it it can only go downhill from there, right? So uh, definitely wow. check that out. In the so, mouth of madness. Is this sort of similar in the same vein as like misery? Is uh, is that what I'm hearing from what you're no. sort of picking up? No, this is more supernatural. It's it's more more demons, more devils, and and one of the things is that you know, at the very beginning, he's he's having lunch with with his his boss who says, "Hey, you need to take this job to find this book. It's worth a lot of money and all this good stuff." Well, in the background, you see a guy bust through a door carrying an axe, and he's just walking right to these towards these characters who are having lunch and they don't see him at all. Everybody else is running and screaming. And then he slams through the wind, uh, through the window. And then he, he's looking straight at that, that, that uh, insurance investigator. And he says, have you read Sutter Kane? <laughs> and, and it's like, that's not, and because that's the author. And, it's, and, and so, so I won't give spoilers, but, but definitely check that out. It's, it's one that, uh, as an author, if I can call myself that now, right, which I think I can, uh, I try, I try my best. Uh, but it's one that uh, I really enjoyed this movie, and I think it would be fun for people to watch. Good. I, it's one that I'm going to be watching this particular tonight on Halloween because I think uh, I, I I respect your opinions and I, I I look forward to these conversations because it always opens my mind to movies that I've not even heard of and I've never heard of this movie and I'm a massive Sam Neill fan so two and two Sam Neill and Charlton Heston so like how can you not go right with that movie so if I can find it on uh, tonight on Halloween I will certainly pick that up and watch it. Definitely check it out, and and that one is number fifty two on their on their list. So you're just all over the place on these Rotten Tomato lists. Like you're really yeah, thrown in still, the numbers you're there. Still, you're still winning. My my alternate may have beat you, but because but, <laughs> just in case it wasn't allowed. But 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 what what you got for your for your number three? So you're gonna see a very. So my top three movies are very in the same vein. And you, they'll they'll become a little bit clearer when we get to our top one, but for my top th th three movies, so my number three movie for horror films of the nineteen nineties, comes down to a movie that reinvented the slasher genre, and it is Scream. Okay. Wes nice. Craven for me, sorry, not Wes Craven. Uh, oh my god, I can't even think of his name right now. Oh my god, how how bad of a uh, host am I that I can't even think of his name right now? Oh, it is Wes Craven. <laughs> Wes Craven, this set up the reinvention of what a slasher film, and to me, really was. 
because it was grounded in reality. And that's what really scares me. So you're going to see a common theme for the next three movies where it's grounded in reality, where this could actually happen. And it probably does happen. And this is the part which really freaks me out because you're you're going along, you're watching these uh, school students sort of beat teenagers and just relax and enjoy themselves. And this person, Ghostface, is hunting them down. And it's not until the end where you're you're still like, at the edge of your seat trying to figure out who Ghostface is. These are certain times you're like, okay, it's this woman, or oh, no, it's the anchor, no, it's this, and no, it's that. And then at the end, you're like, holy shit, I didn't see that coming. And that's the really good, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, the really good uh, way that a film director and a writer can bring you along for the jump scare, right? Because it does bring that jump scare with you, but it brings it in a way that you go, holy crap, the nice person next door to you could be an actual actual axe murderer and be coming for you. So for me, Scream Top 3, no matter what, came out on December 20th, 1996, if you can believe that. So this was a Christmas movie, but it was a horror <laughs> film. So here we are talking about horror that came out on almost five days before Christmas. So my number three has to be because... Courtney Cox was in it. Uh, Nev Campbell was in it. Matthew Lillard was in it. Uh, Drew Barrymore. Uh, it changed the way that we picked up the phone of, do you like scary movies? Yes, I do like scary movies. Rose <laughs> McGowan and David Arquette. So pretty an all-star cast at the time, but still un yeah. relatively unknown for a lot of them because Courtney Cox was known for Friends, but it wasn't that big. At the time, like it is now. So these were pretty unknown people. But similarly, they were quite known for a lot of people. So for my number three, it has to be Scream. Did you like the movie? Oh, I love the movie. I, 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 it does not make my list. And what's funny is looking at my list, it's it's mainly supernatural or sci-fi. Because I've got a sci-fi in there in the ones coming up. Uh, whereas this, you know, like you said, it's it's more slasher. It, it could happen, right? I mean, it's... You know, we, we won't give anything away there, but but it could very well happen. Oh, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. If you have not seen the movie since 1996, I'm sorry. There's been seven movies before it. You have to have seen it at least. Let's be just, it's the boyfriends who do it. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the, uh, so you will you will love this. My My favorite horror movie of all time Okay, you'll have to watch this. It's it's horrible. It's horrible. I'll tell you that. It's called Student Bodies. And okay. I think it was the very first VHS movie that we had rented when I was a kid. Maybe even beta, right? Because there was still that war back then. And it's a student slasher film, but it's the first comedy of those. So I know we're not, you know, talking about the 70s or 80s, whatever this was. I was That's a kid. next year's. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But but this the the bad guy, he's wearing these big giant galoshes, he's on the steps, and he steps in gum. And he's like, uh, and then his glove hits gum on the staircase. And he's like, you know, and he's like twisting his fingers, he's like sugarless. He's like, gotta get the kid with the gum, you know. And it's just funny slapstick movie. Um, uh, definitely, definitely check out student bodies just for a laugh. Uh, but but Scream, back to that. No, great movie, Wes Craven. Again, if you want one of my books, all yours. Uh, but it's but yeah, there's I can't think of anything that I would have done different in Scream as far as for for when when you watch it. I, I think they did a great job in it. I think they made it all believable. Uh, yeah. You're you're worried of what's going to happen. You're you're engaged in it, and you know this is all before cell phones, right? So it's not like somebody can call home. In fact, you know, a lot of authors nowadays are saying, you know, they, they they send the people to the middle of nowhere where there's no signal so they can get rid of that cell phone for instant, yeah, instant checking on people, right? Um, so yeah, no, that was a great, great movie. I, I I loved it. So yeah, no, no complaints there. So number 12, number 12 on the IMDb. I was about to say, give, 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 give me, give me the top here. Give me what rotten tomatoes gets because I'm just sucking up all the air for the 81%. And, but 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 you know what beats it at number eleven? What? Scream two. What? Scream two comes in. It came out in nineteen ninety seven. I mean, it's not on my list, but it came out in ninety seven. Is what it says on 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 the screen rant. I call and bullshit on that. 
and it comes in at number 11. Yeah, I, I don't, I didn't think that was I, good. The fact that there's seven of the seven sequels now, it just bothers me. Like, I, <sighs> I like a good original idea. And yes. don't get me wrong. And, and if we were doing this in the 80s, I'd be talking about Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, yes. uh, Friday the 13th, all those like Leprechaun, all those great movies. But after the third one, you kind of get to the point where you go, Okay, guys, let's create some actual ideas here. So, yep. uh, I, 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 I said scream. What did you say for your top three? And that was that in the mouth of madness. That was in the mouth of mouth of madness. Yes, mouth and, of uh, madness. Yeah. So I, 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 I almost are... put leprechaun on my list. You Is... mentioned it, I almost. Put... Go ahead. I said I almost put leprechaun on my list. It came out in the nineties. Did it? Yeah, with Jennifer Aniston. Yep, it almost made my list because it was just such a good movie. Plus Jennifer Aniston. So, but look at that. We're all, we're talking about the friends. And FYI, rest in peace, Matthew Perry. Like God, yes. that's a horrible passing. And, and I know we were not talking, literally talking about horror, but hopefully Matthew Perry's in a better place right now. So yeah. I wanted to go to top two. Well, actually, top... while we're on that, let's let's uh, say Richard Mole, right? Uh, for uh, for the horror side, you know, of course, everybody knows him from Night Court. He passed away as well. Yeah. Uh, but he, he was in House, where if you that's, haven't seen that with William Cat, definitely right. watch it. It's a fun horror ghost type movie. So, all right. So where are we at now? Number two? As they always say, the rules are three. So we're just waiting for the third one now. So hopefully, I hopefully number, not. Yes, hopefully not. I think on the number two, we were going to go for number one first, right? Give our number ones and then come back. No, we're going. Two. No, we're going number twos now because we're going number twos. Then we're going to talk about our honorable mentions, and then we're going to give our top pick. So as oh. you went first last time, I'm going to go here this time, and right. again, keeping in the same vein of Scream, keeping in the same vein as uh, what goes on uh, in reality. My second favorite horror film of the 1990s bar none is misery kathy bates james con yes again this could be something that is happening right now as we talk and god bless her kathy bates winning the academy award for this is just the piece de resistance because she gave the most blood curdling performance as uh, I, the fan of the author, James Kahn, I can't remember her name right now. It's just off the top of my head and I can't think of it. But Misery, without a doubt, Stephen King, an adaptation of this. And I know Stephen King was not a fan of the adaptation of this. And that's why he yep. went and redid it. And it horribly bombed. <laughs> he should have he just not. I mean, yeah. It, Exactly. But I I think James Kahn and James Kahn and Kathy Bates, two characters, and relatively about 90% of this movie is just that. Just these two people in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. And that is even scarier. Because like you said, in the 90s, you didn't have cell phones. You didn't have a way to be able to check. If you got stuck on the side of the road, and it happens today because I live in Canada where the cell reception in the middle of rural Canada is horrendous. If you get stuck on the road, you could be there for two, three days with no one around. And if someone doesn't come looking for you, you're not going to be found. And how she gets James Conn's character to write the, the most iconic part of that movie is when she takes the sledgehammer to his ankles. And I don't care who you are. If that doesn't just make you cringe up inside, I don't know if you're actually living. So my second favorite movie of the 1990s has to be Misery. Kathy Bates, God bless her, James Conn. Not a big fan, but he did an amazing job in this. I honestly think he should have won the Oscar for it, but that's just me. That that was actually my uh, alternate if uh, it was not going to be allowed. So, okay, so, so that was my that was my number five. So that's so that's my honorable mention. Uh, I can't think of a more perfect movie. Uh, the only problem I have with that, yeah, only problem is certain movies I can't watch again. Okay. Not because they're bad, but because I know what's going to happen, right? I, I Now, 
now it's been long enough. I may actually try to watch that again. I may try to watch it on Halloween because it's a great movie. If I'm taught my daughter to watch it with me, that'll be cool. The hobbling scene is what that's called with the sledgehammer is just, I mean, you're just like, I can picture my daughter's boyfriend just cringing when that happens. Uh, so yeah, I might have to watch that because there, because that's one that's technically family friendly, right? I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's no nudity. There's no, there's some cussing maybe, but Mr. Man, right? I think that's what she calls him. And, but yeah, Kathy Bates, uh, you did an amazing job in that movie. And and James Conn did as well. I mean, that, it was, he was older at the time and it, he just, it was just perfect, perfect movie directed by Rob Reiner, which I think, wasn't he Meathead? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and he was in All in the Family. Like, Rob Reiner, one of the most comedic actors of the 70s and 80s with All in the Family, directs yes. Misery. So take it with what you will, but God bless him. He did an amazing job. Now, I, I just want to make, make this mention here because I, I just realized this. That movie came out 33 years ago this wow. month in November. November 30th, 1990. 33 years ago that movie came out like just like i know we're just i'm, I'm gonna ask you what your favorite your, your second favorite movie of the 1990s here is for a second but i just want to ask this question like the 90s were like you said at the top of the show the 90s were great for horror films they were amazing amazing, amazing. i mean yeah there, there was just i mean it's i don't know if it's on your list or not so i won't mention it but there's just so many movies that came out in the 90s that were just such good horror movies so at the end maybe we just go through some of the ones to because it reminds me of what came out in the 90s right yeah uh and, and i had some that, that i'm like well you know technically that's more sci-fi than horror that's this so so i put you know, some thought into different things and and all that good fun stuff and and you know like one of them that's an honorable mention for me is more of an action movie um, so, so I did that as well, but it's one that the nineties just were, were spot on for horror. I, I don't know what it was. I, I don't know why it, I don't know if it was the, the, the upbeat way that the eighties were, and then things were coming down in the nineties. So people needed that horror fix. Or if, like you said, you know, with, with scream sort of starting off that genre again, and some of these others started off, you know, re rebooted some of the other genres. Uh, you know, that we're still seeing today for the 15th time, right? You know, Army of Darkness is there, right? For for Evil Dead and how many of those, the latest one's great if you haven't seen it. Uh, the apartment building thing, it's really good. Yeah, really good. Uh, the, but that's a new movie. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I, the 90s, it surprised me. In fact, my original list started out as 15 movies. <laughs> I'm going, when you okay, said that to me, I was like, boy, like, are you just going to take the whole hour by yourself and I'll just walk away and come back <laughs> in an hour? But here we are. <laughs> Um, exactly. I, because I am cautious of time and I want to make sure people get through this in an hour so that way they can get to watching great movies. Your number two pick, your number two all time favorite movie in the horror genre in the 1990 goes to drum roll, please. Blah, 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 blah. One that did not make the top 100 list Fallen. Did you ever see Fallen with Denzel Washington? It is a great movie. He plays a homicide detective who witnesses the execution of a serial killer, but soon after the execution happens, his killings start again. And it's the same style as the serial killer. And it's in the trailer where they basically say that demons can change bodies by touch. It's got, you know, for me, what was funny is my, my, my number one movie has very few people that you've heard the names of. You might have recognized them from TV shows or movies, but like Denzel Washington's in this, John Goodman, Donald Sutherland, right? Uh, and Gandolfini is you know, in it. Wow. Yeah, James Gandolfini's in this. So, so it is a really, really good movie. Uh, really creepy. A couple of scenes, as far as that goes. Uh, you know, with with uh, you know the the trailer starts it off with playing the song "Time Is on My Side," right? So it's one of those ones that every time I hear that song, I think of the scene in the movie where the song's at, and it just it's like, wow, it catches you. So something that, you know, 30 years ago can can impact me. And I still think of it every time I hear the song. I, I think they did a pretty good job. So check that out if you haven't seen it. 
I certainly will. I, I didn't even know that this movie existed. And this is the great thing about that, talking to you because you always open my eyes up to movies because I traditionally go mainstream because I'm I'm not one of those to go off to the side. So whenever I sit down with you, I'm like, God damn it, you watch way too many movies when it comes to horror. Like this is why you have a <laughs> sick and twisted mind in those books, man. <laughs> Exactly. Wait, wait till you get a hold of my serial killer book whenever that comes out. Uh, hey, ooh, we'll talk about that in a few yeah. minutes. So I want to turn. So I just want to make sure. For, so number two, you are going with. I am going with Fallen, and I and am going with Misery. Kathy, and Misery was two. number four for those keeping score. So far, you beat me on all of them. <laughs> so. We are going to go to the honorable mentions now. And now we're not going to take a long time to talk about these. We're just going to basically give the top three, top two, top one movie that, in your opinion, should be mentioned in this category. But as we've narrowed it down to five, uh, I I have three. So I'm just going to be up front there. I have three movies that are honorable mentions for me. I've got two, so you go first. Okay, so my top three honorable mentions for the 1990 movies for the best horror films is... Raising Cain with John Lithgow. Great. Probably one of the most scariest movies that I've ever seen. And this John Lithgow is great. And him doing Dexter brings me back to the Raising Cain yes. in a heartbeat. So awesome. when people say John Lithgow has never done something scary, I'm like, have you seen Raising Cain? Because that thing <laughs> is fucking scary as shit. Number two honorable mention for me is Wolf with Michelle Pfeiffer and Jack Nicholson. That almost made my list. And I was, that's why I wanted to make sure I put it on there because it's like, okay, Jack Nicholson is great. He is a fucking fantastic actor. Pardon Thanks, my French. Baby. Exactly. Exactly. Because they fight at the end because they both turn into wolves, right? Yes. Yeah. They and the then bathroom scene. for me, <laughs> the bathroom scene. <laughs> it's in the trailer. So, but yes. Um, and then my third honorable mention. And this one was the one that I was having issues with. This was going to be my alternate for number five. So as I said, I I, I went with, what did I go with number five? Oh my God, I can't even read my own writing here. I went with Dracula. So this is the one that I was a little back and forth with. And it's from one of probably the most, uh, most underrated, but overly great directors of our time, Quentin Tarantino. Yep. I enjoyed From Dusk Till Dawn yes. with George Clooney. And I yes. don't know, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you don't like horror films. Watch this movie because it is the most pardon my French for those who are listening who are underage, beep your ears. Fucked up movies, but the most scariest movies of all time that I've seen. And I am not a big like jump scare. Oh, it's vampires. They're attacking you. But this movie, Quentin Tarantino does an amazing job in this. And I think he's actually, he's an actor. He's one of the main characters in it he as is. well. He's one of the main he is, yeah. Him and George Clooney do a fantastic job in this movie. And yes. like the, the climatic, climatic scene at the end is probably yes. one of the best ways a movie wraps up within the last like 10 minutes and it and most people will say oh it feels rushed and the door the writer didn't have any way to end it so they just ended it this way and it's like i don't care <laughs> because it puts you in a space for those who haven't seen it, i don't want to spoil it uh they get the, the these uh two transients uh get go to a bar they get sort of trapped in the bar by vampires and things happen and literally, as the title says, they have to survive from dust to dawn. <laughs> so take it with it as you please. I think it's just a fantastic movie. And I think I would re highly recommend it to anyone. It's one of my top three honorable mentions. <laughs> yeah, that, that that was my, that's, I've got one more honorable mention, but that was an honorable mention. Uh, it's it's a great movie. Whoa, whoa, I, I, did we actually agree on something here, David? We actually agree on that one. It's Stop the presses. Put, let's <laughs> mark the time down. Seven twenty six as of recording this. <laughs> yep, yeah. I'm gonna see. I don't know if it's on the. Yeah, it's it's number forty one in their list. Uh, but it also has Ju Juliet Lewis in it. Yes, who I think was in a uh, vacation, right? Yeah, uh, and in the scene with her and Quentin Tarantino when he's imagining her say things is just 
just amazing. Uh, Quentin Tarantino impressed me as an actor in that one, right? Mm -hmm. And and yes, he is uh, he is great. He should direct more horror uh, because I think he did an amazing job in it. Uh, like I said, that one for me was as much action as it was horror, right? So that's why it was, and also a little bit of you know serial killer type thing because the brothers, you know, and. And it's one where the the miniseries was actually not bad, uh, at least the first season of it. I didn't watch all the seasons because sometimes those miniseries just drag along. But but at least the first season of it was good. But no, that was a great, great movie. So I should uh, also mention, I did say that uh, Quentin Tarantino directed it. He did not. It was actually Robert oh, Rodriguez. He wrote it, but he did not direct it. Robert Rodriguez did. So I just want to make sure that uh, clears clears that up because... I don't nice. want people uh, to go my away only and send me emails. For the, for the honorable mention, uh, also a John Goodman film. I don't know. Maybe I've got something with John Goodman. Uh, arachnophobia. Ooh, Creepy. good oh, choice. Oh, that spider just bit me. Yeah, you know, and you know, some old man getting ready to get in bed, and 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 it also has uh, the guy from Dumb and Dumber. Uh, what was that guy's name? He was also Jeff, in some big. Jeff Daniels. Yes, Jeff Daniels is in it as well. And he's, of course, afraid of spiders. So that's always a good thing. Uh, if you're going to be in a spider movie, being afraid of spiders is probably not a good thing. Uh, but no, arachnophobia, definitely check it out. Uh, it's got some humor in it. It's The reason it didn't make my list is some some bits of it don't hold up as much as they as they do today, right? But yeah. just in general, if, if you like creepy crawly movies, definitely check out arachnophobia. Yeah, well... There we go. Those are our honorable mentions. So we're going to end on our top favorite horror film of the 1990s. Now I'm going to give this over to you because I want you to just blow me out of the water because I'm pretty sure you know which one mine is, but I want you to go first. So your top favorite horror film of the 1990s, David, is? It's Cube. I don't know that you've ever seen it or heard of it. It's cube. The the it's it's one where it was funny. Whereas you know, Fallen was my number two with all of those actors that are well 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 known, right? Uh, this has the guy who played on Star Trek or not Star Trek on uh, uh, Stargate Atlantis, who played played one of the doctors. Uh, also has a, a the young lady who played in who played Dax on Deep Space Nine, right? So none of these are super famous people. There's been a couple movies afterwards and basically six complete strangers are put into this cube area and and they figure out that everywhere they move in this maze there's a diff there could be different deadly traps. So it's one of those trapped in a maze type type scary movies. Uh lots of blood, uh special effects eh, for nowadays. But I think it holds up enough that if you can if you can forgive them a little bit for the special effects today, uh, some of the stuff, some of the scenes are just amazing because it's one of, you know, what would you do if you all of a sudden woke up inside of this cube? And again, it's it's one of those where they may have overdid the sequels. Uh, and they even had a prequel that wasn't wasn't that bad. But the cube is my top favorite movie from the from the 90s. Right? Believe it or not. <laughs> So what makes it so scary for you? What is the thing that you say, okay, bar none, this is what scares me about this movie. Because you talk about waking up, that's great. But there has to be that moment that you keep on coming back to you and go, you know what? Every time I watch this scene or this moment, I get scared shitless. The the scene that does it for me is where that basically when you end up in the other rooms like fully in the other rooms is when something bad happens right so so you're in the square they're crawling through these little vent tunnels to get to the other ones so you can either go up left right whatever you're in you're in a square box with openings and and there's one scene where the guy lands and he looks back he is safe and right then this mesh just goes completely through the guy's body and and like this metal mesh, and he's still standing there intact for a second, and then bits of his body starts falling. And I'm like, that was just cool. Uh, so 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 that plus you know there's there's a character in it who can't really talk, but he's he's like a savant type type character. And it's just like I said, it's great great movie. It's it's definitely worth seeing. 
uh, you know, in my opinion, cube, not so, the cube, cube, cube <laughs> from 19. And, and cube actually is 42 in the list. So, oh, there you go. Uh, so 1997 cube came out. So my favorite horror film of the 1990s. And it harkens back to my fifth favorite movie because I am an Anthony Hopkins fan through and through. And this man won the Oscar for his role in the movie as Hannibal Lecter, Silence of the Lambs. I don't care who you are. If you don't get just some hair raising moment in that movie, when Hannibal Lecter is talking to Clarice Starling and he says, do you hear the silence of the lambs? And if it does not freak you out the way he's talking to her and the way that he's just monotone in his entire way, I don't know if you're actually alive or have a beating pulse. <laughs> because even though he's not in the entire movie, he's not even an integral part of the movie. He right. Every time he's on that screen you are shaken because you're looking at him and going, you could be my neighbor. You could be someone who's just out on the street right now, but at the end of the day, you're going home and you're eating someone's brains. You're eating someone's body part and the psychology of it, the way that he asks questions. I know it's a written book. I know it's something like uh, other things, but when he is looking at, and I know it's even a sequel to an original movie that he wouldn't yes. wasn't in, I just think right. it is probably one of the best horror films ever created. And I would, I can watch that over and over again and I can still feel scared. Literally, like I said, it's the way he talks to Clary Starling from behind yes. that fucking uh, glass plate. And it just, yeah. And that, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, Go ahead. Great movie. Great movie. Yeah, there's no there's no doubt. I mean that that you know, as you said, Anthony Hopkins freaking amazing, right? Simple as that. Uh I love Jody Foster in it too. I mean that, you know, it 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 almost made my list. It it did not uh for specific reasons because I like the first one better. You like the Brian <laughs> so, Cox one? Yeah. Um uh was it Manhunter, I think it was, right? Yeah. With uh, Brian Cox and uh, Peterson, I forget his name. He yes. he played Gil Grissom on CSI my uh, CSI Las Vegas, and directed by Michael Mann, right? So so you get the whole '80s thing, Miami Vice thing. So so, like I said, I I liked both. The books were awesome, or the book I, I don't remember if it was one or two. I, I can't remember, but but I remember reading it. It was amazing. It was one of the first horror books I I, I read because I I didn't read when I was a kid. I think I told you that before. I was I. I discovered reading in my 20s right so so it's it's like i read everything like but no the, the great movie i can't i can't i can't fault your choice at all in that um the only thing i do fault in that is the imd or the the rotten tomatoes thing don't have that as number one it's number two what's number one the one that beat it is the ring which i didn't like that movie at all like the I, one I'm about sorry. the film the vhs uh, tape? That's the one that uh it's supernatural elements. Uh, what's it say? It's it's uh, uh, super, uh, modern technology and a truly frightening. And uh, yeah, they don't even tell you what it's about in the thing because it's so bad. Um, I, I think that's the one where it was the ring on the television, but okay. that's the one they rank as number one. And I'm like, I just don't get it. I, I'm sorry. I, I prefer. Uh, I, I would if you gave me a choice of which two to watch, I would be watching Silence of the Lambs, right? Right. But there. at the so, same time, anyone who's watching this right now or listen, uh, watching this right now knows that these are just our opinions, and you have opinions as well. Let us know. Let us know what you think of our top ten choices, top fifteen, if you take in our <laughs> honorable mentions. And what would you change? Is there a horror film that you think that we should be listening to or watching? Is there a horror listening to? Well, half the time I was listening to it when I was in the 90s when the pillow was over <laughs> my head. But what what movies do you like? Show us. Give us a look. Leave but, us a comment in the, uh, in the down below. And if you think of it, we missed Tremors, right? Does that count? I was thinking that was more comedy. Well, uh, I, I, I had that on my list. I had that on my Did list. You? And then I put it, crossed it off because it's like, okay, this isn't like, don't get me wrong, Kevin Bacon's great, but I was like, this is more of a comedy because uh, it is a. 
And Reba McIntyre's in it. So can you really have Reba McIntyre as a horror? <laughs> they broke into the wrong rec room, right? Uh, and, and like The Sixth Sense was in the 90s, right? I mean, so there was all of these amazing movies. that I, I think we picked a good... Or you picked it because you named it. I think I think you picked a good uh, year or decade for us to to cover in this. So so thank you for for having me on again. Because and and like you said, everybody, let us know what you think. If we miss something that's really cool, you know, definitely because we like to watch horror movies too. <laughs> but before we let you go, David, I've got to ask because I always do it. What's what are you up to? What are you writing these days? Because I see a. Big giant new cover of Living Death behind you since the last time we talked. What's been yes. going on? Have what's on the well, agenda for David for author of the Hoa franchise? I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, so so Living Death is one I actually republished. I, I'm now a signed author, so I have a publisher now. Uh, I, I I don't have enough money to buy a big vet, but I do have enough to buy a matchbox car vet. So hey, yes. I'm, I'm I'm making money as an author. Yes. Uh, so, so, but it's one that uh, that I'm republishing all of my books through them. So, so they're doing a great job. Uh, my books are available at Walmart, Walmart.com for goodness sakes, right? You can search on my name on Walmart and see my books. Uh, the the Living Death has been translated into several languages now, uh, Spanish and Portuguese for th those two at least. Uh, wow. And it's something that's just amazing. I signed with Next Chapter Publishing, and I really like what they do. They have they have stuff like you know I've got a deck of cards with Living Death on it now, and and T-shirts and all this kind of stuff and posters. Uh, I love it. And and the the latest book that that people can get is called The Devil's Well. So earlier when I mentioned H.P. Uh, Lovecraft and and Stephen King, this is sort of a mixture between H.P. Lovecraft and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Uh, so so that's the one that's available now. I hope people check it out. Uh, the next one after that is a serial killer book that took me longer to write than all of my others because I'm writing it from the first person perspective and I'm writing it, you know, gi giving you why the person's doing what he's doing. And it's a roller coaster ride because at first you agree with why he's doing it. And then, and then later you're like, not so sure that killing somebody who messes up your order to drive through should, you know, mean they get killed, but then you're back on his side. You're like, well, yeah, he's doing good here. And, I, I, and I thought that that only happens in Florida, right? So I'm, I'm assuming that's <laughs> exactly. based in Florida, right? <laughs> exactly. Based in Florida. And, and that one's called the bloody list. So, so it's, it's one that, uh, that, you know, it's it's with the editors now, which with my version of English, hopefully it'll be out by next Halloween. <laughs> but but no, every, everything's been going good. And I appreciate you having me on your show tonight. Always a pleasure. Um, just a reminder that the links to David's website and to his Amazon page, so that way you can purchase his books, will be in the show notes. So please scroll down and check those out. Because as a, as a fan of his work and as a fan of his, well, hopefully a soon to be fan of his newest book, The Devil's Well, which has still not arrived in Canada for some reason. I've ordered it and it has not sh it has not gotten to me yet. Maybe it did and it was hiding it from me. <laughs> So that's why I have not had you on the show to have you to talk about that because I'm waiting for it to arrive. But here's hoping that it arrives here soon. Or I'm just like I said, I have have to ask my husband, but he'll say, why are you reading horror films? He's getting ideas. No husband of mine. I'm not. <laughs> um, so as always, David, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you and talk about horror and the horror genre. And I think, like you said, we, we picked some pretty good movies and we did, we, we, we respectfully disagreed on a few things. But overall, it shows you how much great movies in the horror genre came out in the 1990s. So it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and it was amazing. And the list, what's, what amazed me about the list is we didn't have any in our actual top fives that matched on it. We had the alternates that matched. Yeah. But, but so people have 10 movies plus the other. So 15 movies that are unique that they can watch starting now on halloween so so watch watch horror or if you and want to watch it on christmas you can as well if you're watching this on christmas day and you're like hey i wonder what horror movies i should watch watch it on christmas halloween year round oh let me show you real quick my 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 cousin megan who started editing editing my first books she sent me this christmas tree ornament 
with the book covers. She handmade this thing. So, so, so that hangs up on my Christmas tree every year. So I was just, you know, when you mentioned Christmas all year or Halloween all year, I thought, thought of that. So, so that's amazing. I do want to make one more mention before I wrap. And that is, um, we did not plan to have all these 10 movies not match up. Like sure. we, we chatted about three times prior to this saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. Uh, this is how, this is when we're going to record. And then David messaged me this morning saying, I haven't gotten an email. It's like, oh crap, that's right. Then I sent it. So we had no prior knowledge that these movies were going to be our top 10 movies. I did not ask for his. He did not ask for mine. It was an honest to goodness. Oh my God. We actually chose to, all, in my opinion, 10 great movies and two of them I'm going to go watch. So if you think that this is scripted, it is not because it is real and it is showing you that, uh, the cross border interview series is sometimes a great source of horror related information. As yes. always, David, it's a pleasure to sit down with you. To my listeners and to my viewers, thank you for tuning in for another great episode. Uh, we will be back uh, possibly next week, a week from now, two weeks, who knows, with more authors and uh, musicians and all around great people when we return on the CBI Signature Series. Until then, remember, stay informed, stay engaged, and just keep talking.